Hi everyone, welcome back to this episode 2 of my test-driven development series. And in this video, we are going to do two things. First, we're going to review the project overview with the requirements. And uh, we're going to review what the project should do, what will be the contract that will be offered to the uh, end user. And from that, we are going to analyze which will be the perfect place to start testing. So this will be the requirements. First, we have to display a list of all habits and we have a few sub requirements for that. One will be to only display the habits that have not been completed for the day, which basically means that we only show the habits that are currently active, the ones that we have not yet completed. We also want to display how many times the habit has been executed for the current day. And to show you what I mean, I have the UI right here and under the habit name, we have how many times that habit has been executed throughout the day. And similar to that, we should display the percentage of the completion of each habit, which is this circular chart that we have here with the percentage in the middle. We should also be able to create a new habit, update a habit and delete a habit. These are your typical crude actions. And by crude, I mean C-R-U-D, create, update, and delete. Also, we need to show all the executions for the current day. We should be able to create a new execution with the plus button, which is this button over here. And also, we should be able to remove an execution in case we click the button by mistake. Looking at this project overview, we can define a couple of actors in our project, which will be the habits and we are going to need to have an ID, a name, and how many times per day we are going to execute that habit. So those will be the fields or the information that we need for the habit. We also need executions, which are basically counters of how many times we have executed a habit during the day. For that, we only need a habit ID so that we know which habit did we execute, and also a timestamp to know when did we execute this habit. Now, if we go back to the requirements, the best place to start testing is the simplest task that you can execute in your project. For example, displaying a list of all habits, and we can probably also create or test the creation of a new habit. These uh, three requirements that we have here relate to the UI, so we are not going to test those just yet. I'm probably going to save those for last because most likely these uh, little items in the UI like the timer or the dial or the button are going to be Vue.js components so we can easily test those in isolation using Jest. So what we are going to do today is probably just test this uh, display a list of all habits and then test that we can create a new habit. The first thing I need to do is correct a mistake from the last video. If you recall, since we are going to focus on feature tests in this series, I went ahead and deleted the unit folder and its contents. The problem is that PHP unit is configured to look for that folder as stated in the test suite section. We could remove the unit folder from this section, but just because we are not creating unit tests now, doesn't mean that you won't need them in the future. So the easiest thing to do is just add the folder back. And now we can run tests again. And since we're here, let's create a new test file for the habits. What I like to do is group all of my test cases for each actor in their own file. So all test cases for habits will be in one file. To create a new test file, use this artisan command. This will create a new file inside the feature folder. Okay, step one, we need a failing test. Thinking back to the requirements, we want to test that if we visit the route where the habits should be displayed, we will correctly render a view and that view will have a list of habits available. Let's follow the three steps of testing. Arrange, act, assert. In the arrange part, we set up the things we need for the test. So in this case, we need a list of habits. I'm going to use model factories to create 
three habits, like this. Obviously, we haven't created any models or model factories, but I expect this to fail. I can worry about what's missing after that. I'll assign the resulting collection to a variable called habits. In the act part, I will visit a route called habits. And finally, in the assertion part, I'll make sure I get an HTTP response of 200, meaning that the view is correctly rendered. Also, I will assert that the view has a variable called habits with the exact values as the habits variable, meaning that the exact same habits I created are now available to the view. Okay, let's try this out. Go back to the terminal and run sale test. Hmm, that's interesting. Let me see what's wrong. Ah, oh, right, this is an important detail to note. Naming convention is important. PHP unit is looking for file names ending in test, not tests, plural. So let's rename that file and the class name as well. And since we are here, let's also change the name of the test. Again, naming convention is important. All the test functions must begin with the word test. Let's call this method test that the habits view can be rendered. Okay, let's try this again. Sale test. And now we have our first failing test. We can finally move to step two, which is write the least amount of code to make this test pass. From the error message, we are trying to use a habit model class that doesn't exist. So let's create a new model. Now go back to the test and import the newly created habit model class, like this. That's it, now let's run the test again. Now we have an error saying that the model factory is missing. We're making progress. To solve this error, let's create a new factory for the habit model. To allow Laravel to auto-discover this class as my model factory, simply name it with the name of your model followed by the word factory. This will create a file inside database factories. Leave it as it is for now. Okay, let's test again. And now we have a different error, but this example test is bothering me, so let's get rid of it real quick. Okay, much better. The error now states that there is no such table called habits in our database. And to solve that, we need a database migration to create the habits table. I'm using the create flag to let Laravel do a little scaffolding for me. If you check the database migrations folder, there we have our new migration. It is creating a habits table with an ID column and all the timestamps, created at, updated at, and deleted at. Again, leave everything as it is. We don't need to add anything else to solve the problem at hand. What we need to do now is allow our test to run this migration. For that, let's go back to the test file and we are going to use this trait here called refresh database. By simply using this trait in our test class, all database migrations will run at the beginning of each test and will be automatically rolled back once the test is done. Okay, back to the terminal and test again. And we get a new error. And notice that we are finally in the assertion part of our test. Excellent. But what I like to do in this type of tests is to disable exception handling so that I get the exact exception that was thrown during the request process. So let's do that. Before this get call, we are going to use without exception handling. Okay, let's uh, test again. And now we get the exact exception that is being thrown, which is this one right here. To solve this, we need a route. So let's create one. Open routes web.php and I'll duplicate this default route. 
change the URL to habits and remove the return statement. Remember that we are only trying to solve one problem at a time. Returning a view from this route was not the problem. We just need a route and that's it. Only write the least amount of code to get the test to pass. Okay, test again and new error. Also notice how we are now passing the first assertion and now the route needs to return a view. Using a bit of wishful thinking, I imagine this route will be called something like habits.index. Okay, let's test one more time. New error. The view habits.index was not found. Let's create the view file to get past this issue. Inside resources views, create a new folder called habits, and this will be the home of all future views that are related to habits. Starting with index.blade.php and leave the view empty. We just need the view file. That's all. Test again. And okay, this is an interesting one. Failed asserting that null is an instance of eloquent collection. What does that tell you? We expect the view to have a list of habits, a collection of habit models to be precise. And we expect that collection to be in a variable called habits. But instead we got null because we are simply returning a view from the route without passing any data. Now here you might be tempted to write the code to actually get the list of habits directly from the database and then pass it to the view. But hold on and read the error again. All we need is an instance of illuminate database eloquent collection. Remember, write only the least amount of code and commit as many scenes necessary to get the test to pass. So let's do exactly that. First, I'm going to import illuminate database eloquent collection. I'll create a new variable called habits and set that to a new collection and then pass that variable to the view as habits. Test again. Excellent. Now we get a new error saying that the amount of items in the collection does not match what we expect, which is a list of three habits. Now, what would be the least amount of code required to solve this problem? Is it to manually create the model classes and add them to the collection? Nope, that'll be in fact a lot more code than just getting all the habits from the database like this. And finally, if we test again, we now have a passing test. For the refactoring step, all I want to do for now is move away from the route callback and place this functionality inside a controller. We are not changing the core behavior, just making the code clean and organized. Start by creating a new controller class. And now import the newly created controller so we can use it in our routes. Now open app HTTP controllers habits controller.php and add a public function called index. Grab the contents of the route callback and move it into the controller. And don't forget to import the habit model class. Back in our route, replace the callback function with an array. The first item is the controller class name and the second is the controller method that will handle this route. And since we're here, let's also name this route habits.index. If everything went well, we should still have a passing test. And we do. Perfect. All right, that should be all for this episode. Next week, we will test the creation of a new task. See you in the next one.